couple of hot laps out here right now with the 88 degree men. Bring them down, put them on a clock, Michael. Coming across the start finish line, and this looks to be a very smooth ride for the 88 degree men and Scott Liddy Code. Across the start finish line, heading down the front stretch. First lap of three, fast lap Friday qualifying on 610 K1A. And here he comes down here to the corner. Nice boat ride, just exactly as you said. Very smooth through the corner here. Nobody's run on the course here for about 15 minutes since J Dub went out and went unfortunately dead in the water. So he's the first one to carve through this lower corner, and it's a good one. And he's already down the back stretch, coming back up at you, Michael McDonald, yep. the 88 degree man. And in lane number two at the exit pin of turn number two, the Farmers Exchange turn number two. Farmers Exchange, they've been working for you for nearly 90 years. 215 West Canal Drive in downtown Kennewick with all the power you'd ever want. Power equipment. It's at Farmers Exchange. Top end of the course into turn number three. And here comes Scott Liddycote and the 88 degree men. Wall of water off the skid fin. AZ conditions out there. And uh, it's almost difficult now to even see the outline of Rattlesnake Mountain as Liddycote comes around the exit pit of turn number four across the start finish line and a speed of 153.069. That is our new fast lap. And two to go. 153.0 and he's down here hard again. Already to the entrance pit of the corner. Just wow, like Brad, that. looks like glass. That water is smooth. Yeah, he's That's got good water conditions thing. right now. Maybe the best we've seen so far, and he's making good use of it right now. But he ran a faster lap than that this morning. I think he, he twiddled off a 157, so he'd like to get up and start sniffing that 160 mark. you got a better look at him now, Michael McDonald. He's coming your way. Back stretch and very good water conditions right now. And the 88-degree man, first lap 153.069 right miles per right. hour. Let go finish sixth in the 2011 Other final, side, the left. first appearance at Tri-Cities. Coming around the top end of the course into turn number four and swings out into lane number two at the exit pin and down the front stretch and it just doesn't look like he has that momentum or boat speed coming off that top end turn across the start finish line at a 152.219 miles per hour so losing about a mile per hour on that second run down the front stretch into turn number one well, he's, he certainly looks good coming down here the speed dropped off just a little bit but he's certainly getting a nice boat ride down here that time he got a little bit looser here as the water's getting a little bit rougher, but he handled it well. He's already off the corner and down the backstretch, but I don't think that's where these guys want to be. They were 157, 158 this morning, and they're they're off it a little bit right now. Well, on that one, he also swung a little bit farther out, took about lane three as opposed to one or two where he was in the first two laps, so that may be reflected in his time. Yeah, so far, those are the fastest laps we've seen, correct? Yes, okay. that is officially. Correct. Yep, oh, back to 153. Point zero six nine. His first lap is the fastest lap we have seen so far in qualifying in this fast lap Friday. This time, lane number three, swinging out a little bit wide because he has more boat speed, and this may be a little bit better lap coming across the start-finish line. Northern Quest Resort and Casino, and a 150.862. So he ended up losing a little bit on each lap. He started off with the hot lap at 153.069. Take the other five on modification. And then Saturday, they're actually talking about building another one next year. So I don't know. Round two, we'll fast lap qualifying. Next year, 2012 we'll, Lamb Wesleyan we'll Columbia Cup. Cup. 88 now, degree man, Scott Ludico. Up, uh, I mean, obviously, it's the cost involved here. Who, uh, who uh, you know, paid for the cost of uh, the project itself? Um, basically, the water flow is on that and um, we as a college uh, we went and furnished the uh, filler material the grinding any little hand tools and stuff that we did need so without the support of our administration letting us do this i mean for one thing you got to say thanks to the guys who... and you'll see the miss hawk on the water during columbia cup this weekend this has been a water follies update i'm dennis shannon for kona and our Water Follies update with Dennis, brought to you by Avalon Healthcare, your bridge from hospital to home. Give them a call at 547-8811. All right, degree men, 88 out on the course, and another lap in qualifying, and across the start-finish line, we'll get to the speed, and lap number one of the second trip out, a 154.342 miles per hour, so a better run. And we'll push uh, the 88 degree men back into second place in our qualifying. But still yet to come out of the course for a full lap is Dave Billwalk in the one spirit of guitar 96. Guys, bottom of the course and a nice run for the 88. And uh, Scott Liddycote seems like he's pretty comfortable after the issues he had in Detroit. Well, they said they wanted to uh, run conservatively that first time, which they did. And they were going to try and run a little bit quicker this time. 
And uh, that was a quicker lap than the other three he ran earlier, correct? Yes. Okay, so he's up. He's up a little quicker already. Let's see if he can do it better again. He's already up to your end. So take him, Michael. Bring him down. Uh, I got everybody down here in the dock. They're anxious to hear you tell me so I can tell them what the speed is. So okay. kick it out to us. All right. Well, that first lap at 154.342 miles per hour. About a mile per hour better than the earlier effort. At Fast Lap Friday, qualifying with the H1 Unlimited as presented by Air National Guard and a 153.927, so losing about a half a mile per hour on lap number two. Scott Liddycoat, the 88-degree man, heading down the front stretch towards the Blue Bridge in turn number one. Hey, guys, I'm back. I, I'm over here at turn two. Tony, welcome. I am. I'm glad to be back. Uh, and if Liddycoat comes around and is looking very sharp, you guys have been calling a great one as I've been listening, and uh, he's looking really nice as he heads down the back stretch. Well, it sounds like you've got a little bit of wind coming right at you. It's incredible over here. The wind is blowing uh, very hard. It's uh, it's definitely up above. It doesn't look like it's uh, that much down on the water surface, uh, at least here at turn two. Well, that's probably a good thing for the boats, right, Tony? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, the uh, corner that uh, we were talking about earlier this morning, uh, you definitely can see the hole right there. I, I don't know how everything's been going as far as the boats this afternoon, but it certainly is still there from up here. Early on in qualifying, the first couple of boats seems like they had smooth water with less wind. Now, let's see, that uh, third lap at a 153.888 miles per hour. So, uh, as it turns out, the 88-degree men with Scott Liddycoat will jump in front of the five-gram truck 